tell him I can't. No. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for coming along to our service this morning. It's nice to be able to meet in person, albeit we are down on numbers a bit. Um, the children, you'll just be staying in today because there's a wee video for you to watch during the service. Um, we'd just like to, there was a, a notice up in the intimations about just making sure you've got plenty of space round about you. We just want everyone to stay safe. There was information from the government via the church office the rules haven't really changed, but just emphasising making sure everyone has a lot of space that they're comfortable where they are. Today, we were looking forward to our nativity service with the Sunday School and others who were helping, but due to many key people, and if you look around, you'll know who I'm talking about, many key people have either tested positive or are self-isolating, so we've had to cancel the nativity service um, today. Um, although William's not here, and give him, I'd like to give William thanks for preparing today's service and leaving it in our capable hands. He also recorded all the music for us before um, in plenty of time. Also this evening, the Lahona Chorus uh, concert, Christmas concert was supposed to be in the church. It has been cancelled. And also Friday's watch night service, the decision was made as a precaution just to keep everyone safe to cancel that. So... Um, unfortunately, that's not going on. However, next Sunday, hopefully, we will all be back here for our family service. And any of the children, if you've got a, something you want to come and show everybody that you got from Santa, please bring it along with you. Um, I'm not sure what else it is in the intonations. Um, Thursdays, as usual, are open for prayers, and that's the, the Boxing Day family service. One other intimation, I think it's been up for the last few weeks, about gift aid. Um, if you don't know anything about it, please speak to Margaret. And if there's any change in your circumstances, again, speak to Margaret about it. The church does benefit substantially from those who give using the gift aid scheme. Last week, there was, it was Gift Sunday, and I, I wasn't here, but I believe there was a, a lot of gifts. So thank you very much for that. And also thank you to all those who took them into Johnston, into the social work department. If you haven't yet picked up one of the prayer uh, booklets for 2022 that in the vestibule, please take one as you're leaving today. Our call to worship this morning is based on Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Stand in awe before the Lord, for the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. We're going to sing together now hymn 35, Mission Praise 35, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Let us pray. Father, you have said that whatever we give is acceptable if we give it eagerly. You have said that we should give according to what we have, not as a comparison with others, but as an act of worship to you. We have brought our offerings to you today with eager hearts, and we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. You chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus, and as we think of her faith, joy, and desire to do your will, give us help to follow her example. As our lives at home become so busy with all the preparations for Christmas, help us not to become so smothered by the trappings and the tinsel, the cards and the presents, the holly and the mince pies, that we forget we are celebrating the coming of your son into the world. And make this last week a time to prepare ourselves for the birth of your son. We thank you that happiness lies more in giving than receiving. Help us to find true happiness this Christmas time. We give thanks for the extraordinary Christmas story. And we give you thanks that you still come and make yourself known to us today. In this Christmas season, bring your light, your healing and your hope. Thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives, for your goodness and for your blessing over us. Thank you that you're able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care, your mercy and grace. Thank you that you're always with us and will never leave us. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. And forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, and for all that you've given. Help us to set our sights and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks in the words that you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Luke chapter 1 and reading from verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well on in years. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. 
Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well on in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. We'll now sing our next hymn, Like a Candle Flame. Our second reading is from the first book of Luke, from verse 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will be with child 
and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the one to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. We will now sing hymn 493, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We continue reading from the first chapter of Luke, starting at verse 39. Mary visits Elizabeth. 
At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Amen. Lord, we come before you this morning amazed at your mighty wonder. You are indeed the one and only God who we need to turn to in times when we are worried and concerned for ourselves and others everywhere in the world. Open our eyes to the glory of your presence. Help us in this time of quiet to listen so that we may hear your voice. Help us to understand and be open to the challenges of your truth. Fill our lives with wonder, love, and praise. In this time of Advent, as we approach that wonderful day when we celebrate the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, to show us the way that you want us to live our lives. Forgive us for all the things we have done wrong. We are sorry for the times when we have not done what we should have when we have been unkind to others, when we have had nasty thoughts or not helped someone when we know we should have. God of mercy and grace, you know all our faults and failings, the ones seen by all and the ones that we hide. As we hope to be forgiven, O Lord, teach us also to forgive and help us by what we do each day to show love for one another. We give you thanks for this family time together to worship you and to give you praise. Whilst we have been unable this morning to have our traditional nativity play, we still give thanks for all our children and for the opportunity to meet here together, watch online, and to worship you, learn of your teachings, and to prepare ourselves for the wonders of Christmas Day, which fast approaches. Almighty and gracious Lord, we come before you aware of our own weaknesses and of a world that is far from the way that you want it to be. But you are a God of hope, the Prince of Peace, bringing light into darkness, comforting and compassionate. And we know that you are always with us, around us and within us, knowing our innermost thoughts. We think of the people who are lonely and isolated at this time of Christmas and who do not look forward to this time of year in the way that many of us do. Be with all those who are unwell, whether as a result of the pandemic or for other reasons, all those who have to isolate. Comfort them and all those who care for them in their time of need. We think of all those who work in hospitals, doctor surgeries, pharmacies, ambulance drivers, nurses, porters, those doing vaccinations, and all those planning and organizing all that needs to be happening in this time of emergency. There are many people this year who will find this a particularly difficult time as the effects of the pandemic have made social isolation so much more prevalent. May your love and compassion be a support to them all. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, touch the hearts and minds of everyone affected by senseless violence around the world. 
At this very time, when your son was born in a stable, we think of families without a home or a roof over their heads. Children orphaned, fathers and husbands and men unaccounted for, people torn between staying in their war-torn country or fleeing in makeshift boats on perilous voyages in the hope of finding safety and the prospect of a new life elsewhere. We pray for the healing of their broken hearts. Help all countries of the world to be open to receiving and welcoming refugees and migrants, and may all people treat others with the compassion that they deserve so that they would know and experience the best of human mankind. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. We ask for your help in moving hearts and minds of everyone so that the world will be a more peaceful place and one where all peoples will have clean water to drink, food to sustain them, a roof over their head, and peaceful communities to live in. For all those struggling with the loss of a loved one, and we especially think of those in our village who are grieving, you wrap your arms around them and touch them with your unfailing love and kindness and move all those close to them to follow in your example. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that you are the Most High God. Father, we lift up the leaders of our country and countries of the world and all those who have set up in places of authority to rule and govern and guide us. And we pray that they would rule the lands of the world and the many institutions with wisdom and integrity. We pray that each one would carry out their various responsibilities with honesty and for the benefit of the nation and the wider world. Clothe each one with righteousness and justice. And we pray that all selfish ambitions would be laid aside and that your plans and purposes are fulfilled for the well-being of all citizens. At this time, we think of you as the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the person who brought light into the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and touch all these situations with your grace and love as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. continue with Luke's gospel beginning at chapter 1 verse 57 the birth of John the Baptist when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby she gave birth to a son her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy and they shared her joy on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak, praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. Hi kids, this is the story of Christmas. There was a woman in a small town named Mary. 
she was engaged to a good man named Joseph. They were planning a wedding and a future together. So many things to think about. But one day, God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary. He said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Mary was confused and a little scared. She had no idea what the angel was about to say. We don't see angels that often, right? Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will have a baby boy, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of God. Mary was afraid because she was not married yet. But she said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Mary was so scared to tell Joseph about what happened. When Joseph knew about this, he was scared too. He wasn't sure about the wedding anymore. But he loved Mary so much and didn't want to hurt her. One night, an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because she will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will be the Savior of all. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary as his wife. Their plan was back on track, and they were now ready to welcome a special baby into the family. Many exciting things were coming. Mary and Joseph lived in a town called Nazareth, but Joseph was from Bethlehem, known as the City of David. Joseph was a descendant of King David. Yes, that David, the one who killed Goliath the giant. One day, Augustus, the Roman Emperor, decreed that a census should be taken. Everyone had to return to their own hometown to register for the census. So Mary and Joseph packed their bags and traveled to Bethlehem. Mary was pregnant and the time for the baby to be born was quickly approaching. So they started looking around for a place to stay. Because of the census, the whole town was packed and there was no room available. Finally, after looking all day, they found a place where Mary could have the baby. This place was not a nice hotel or even a guest room. The place they found was a manger, so there were probably some animals around there too. Mary and Joseph really needed a place, so they decided to stay there. On a special night, Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the reign of King Herod. He came to the world as a baby. Joseph and Mary were so happy to have him in their new family. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel told them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Go visit him. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by many other angels praising God and saying, Glory in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. The shepherds were so excited to visit Jesus. So they started packing their bags and began their journey to find this special baby. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened. Jesus, our Savior, is born. The shepherds hurried to the village of Bethlehem to find Jesus. And they found him there, lying in the manger, just as the angel had told them. They were overjoyed to see the Messiah. After seeing him, they went back to their flocks, praising God for all they had heard and seen. They also shared with many others about what happened. The Messiah was now here on earth.
At that time, wise men from the East found about this special event. They were very smart and knew a lot about the stars. One day, they found a special star in the sky. This star showed the way to the newborn king. They wanted to meet this special baby. So, like the pastors, they packed their bags and traveled to Jerusalem. When they got there, they asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this. He didn't like the idea about a new king. So Herod called together the priests and teachers of the scripture and asked them, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, they answered, just like the prophet said, O Bethlehem, a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people. King Herod called the wise men and told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. I don't think King Herod really wanted to worship Jesus. He was jealous and didn't want a new king taking his place. Now the wise men were so close to finding baby Jesus, so they continued their journey to Bethlehem. We don't know exactly how many people were on this journey, but we know they had three special gifts for the newborn king. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They traveled a long distance and they were so excited to finally see Jesus. The star guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. By that time, Jesus wasn't a newborn baby anymore. He lived in a house now. The wise men entered the house and found Jesus there. They quickly bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were strange gifts for a young boy. But Jesus was more than just a little boy. He was the king and savior of all. So he received these special gifts. When it was time to leave, they remembered that King Herod was waiting for them. But God warned them in a dream not to return to him. So they went back to their country by another route. Many adventures awaited Jesus. Although this marks the end of the Christmas story, it was in fact just the beginning of a wonderful story of grace. Many years after this night, Jesus was going to show us how much he loves us. He came to the world to bring us love, joy, peace, and hope. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. The end. Our final reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 1, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there with, to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they, were, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. As there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is from Mission Praise, number 342, Infant Holy. Let us pray. May the blessing of joy abide within you. May the blessing of peace rest upon you. May the blessing of love flow out through you. May all the blessings of the Lord be yours at Christmas and in the new year. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.